Good afternoon. As the mayor of the great city of Houston, I appear before you today to reassure Houstonians and our neighboring communities that our first responders are on the job providing our safety. We all know that we had a tragedy at Lakewood yesterday evening when families were coming together to worship and to prepare for America's number one sports event. We all got calls. It was a tragic scene. It's an ongoing investigation, but I can assure everyone that it is our highest priority to have total transparency as we stand before you today, you will know what we know as, it, as we learn it. I want to speak to our diverse community. Every place of worship is important to the law enforcement community that stands behind me. Whether it's our churches, our synagogues, our mosques, our temples, we are going to provide you protection. We're increasing security, won't discuss publicly all provisions, but we're going to continue to make public safety our highest priority. I would also like to emphasize we need to continue to be aware of mental health issues in our community, indications that mental health played a role in an early investigation. want to also ask the public not only keep the victims in their prayers, the suspect's family in our prayers. There was a lot of pain exhibited yesterday and being felt today. I want you to pray for the first responders. The two gentlemen that neutralized the suspect yesterday, a TABC officer and an HPD officer, did not go to work yesterday morning planning to have to use their weapons. They're suffering today. They need our prayers and our counseling. And in closing, let me thank the men and women of every agency that's represented up here today, and some are out in the field. I speak quite often about collaboration of our law enforcement agencies in our community. I want the public to know, I want Houstonians to know that we have every level of government represented here today, led by our fine outstanding Chief Fenner. The scene yesterday was hectic, but people came together, agencies, all the agencies representing law enforcement in our community at the state level and at the federal level. It's an ongoing investigation, but that's the way cooperation is supposed to work, and to the Houston community. We feel, as we stand before you today, the community's unity that's what great communities do. We don't start pointing fingers. We don't worry about who's going to get credit for work. We come together. This is a great community, great people, but with the first responders that showed up at the scene and have worked all night long and have an ongoing investigation. Let's keep our first responders. We want to assure Reverend Osteen's church that we understand the trauma that they went through to those families. We want them to understand everybody was doing everything they could on the scene yesterday, the reunification of the families. We had families separated from their children. So this is what collaboration and unity and dedication to public safety provides. Let's continue to support the first responders. We'll be very transparent as we go forward. And with that message, I would like to yield to Chief Finner. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to first uh, thank uh, all of uh, my colleagues, uh, and that includes all the men and women on the front line. The mayor hit some points of the collaboration and, and the difficulty in, in the scene uh, yesterday, but very proud of, of everybody who uh, showed up and um, we got everything un under control. Um, I, I want to... Uh, ask for prayers for a seven-year-old uh, kid who's fighting for his life. Um, and, and questions came up yesterday uh, about him. And I, I think that what we need to do for him is, is pray. 
Um, he's still in critical condition fighting for his life. The last report I got, the 57-year-old male who was uh, shot has been released. Uh, I want to ask for continued prayers for him and his family um, and all families uh, involved. Uh, the Lakewood family, and, and the mayor spoke on it, but I, I spoke to uh, Pastor Osteen this morning, um, and he would have been here. But his duty, his heart is, is with his congregation right now, trying to start the healing process. And we want to pray for them uh, in our entire community. Uh, but as I said yesterday, I'll say it again. Uh, we go through tragic moments, uh, but we're going to stand up as Houstonians, uh, as, as like we always do with any tragedy. Uh, but we wanted to uh, come here and provide an update on, um, on the incident of yesterday. Uh, and I just want to go over a few things, um, a few individuals who are here. Um, Mayor Whitmire already spoke. Um, I, I'm speaking, and uh, Chief Pena will speak. Um, uh, the uh, FBI SAC, uh, Douglas Williams, will say a few words. Uh, TABC Director uh, Kevin Lilly will make some remarks. Um, the update on the actual investigation is going to come from our commander of a homicide, uh, Hasek. Um, we're going to follow up in Spanish um, with Commander Hector Garcia. We'll probably just summarize every, everything that uh, everybody's saying up here uh, briefly. Um, and then we'll go to uh, question and answers. Also, I want to acknowledge um, the director of uh, DPS, Gerald Brown, is here. Thank you. And also Harris County uh, Sheriff Ed Gonzalez. And our district attorney, uh, Kim Ogg, is, is here as well. And if I missed out on somebody, uh, you let me know. But um, a lot of work has been conducted um, and just in, uh, since yesterday, and a lot of things are still going on. We will not be able to answer it, every question. Um, information that we do have, uh, we'll share it with you if we, if we can, but um, uh, let's uh, just take that into consideration. Um, also, I want to close out by saying um, it's important, as the mayor said, that our community and not only religious institutions, all of our communities. We need to hold one another up in this moment, in any other moment. We need to watch out for one another. And you'll see us out there, more visible presence. But behind those visible uh, presence are true relationships where we communicate every day uh, with everybody in our community that we possibly can. Um, and we'll continue to, to do that. Um, I'm going to step aside uh, briefly and uh, bring up uh, Chief uh, Sam Pena. Thank you, thank you Troy. <laughs> and thank you, Mayor, for uh, bringing uh, this group together. I want to first extend my gratitude as well to all the uh, agencies that, were, that participated in this incident, uh, the ones that we collaborate on a day-to-day -day basis because, uh, again, it's not – it's. It's about those relationships that are built ahead of time that uh, ensures an efficient response to these types of incidents when, when needed. Also, uh, again, our prayers to the young child that, that was injured. Uh, our community uh, that, that is suffering is traumatic for our community as well when these incidents happen. So, But uh, the purpose uh, of my briefing here today is just to allay some of the fears that may uh, be out there in regards to any possible exposure to chemicals that uh, may or may not have been present at the, at the scene. As we mentioned yesterday, in collaboration with the Houston Police Department's bomb squad, our hazmat task force and decontamination task force were on scene <clears throat> conducting tests on any of the products that may have been at the location. The uh, tests were completed, the preliminary uh, uh, tests were completed on scene. I can safely say that there is no risk of exposure to any chemical or product that may have been present to anybody that was at the uh, facility, at the, at the church, any of the first responders, anybody that came in contact or in the general vicinity, and certainly no danger to our community in, in terms of, of any hazmat products. Um, the products on their own are, are benign and they're common products that we would see in, in other applications. So I want to make sure that we communicated that to our community. There was no risk of exposure or, or ill effect or hazard to our community as a result of any product that was out there. And uh, we're going to continue our partnership with uh, law enforcement, certainly my my partner in public safety, Troy Finner, and his team uh, until we uh, complete this investigation. So, turning it back Chief. to you, Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
FBI SAC Special Agent in charge, uh, Williams. Got you, Thank you, Chief. Got you. Thanks. Thank you, Chief. Appreciate it. I'd first like to start by thanking all of the partners who are, uh, who are here today for a seamless response to the incident uh, yesterday. Good afternoon. My name is Doug Williams. I'm the Special Agent in charge of the FBI's Houston Field Office. Unfortunately, We've always said that it's not a matter of if an active shooter event will occur in our city, but when. That win was Sunday afternoon, just before a service at one of the largest congregations, not just in Houston or Texas, but in the United States. We are extremely thankful for the quick response of the two officers working security at the church at the time that engaged the shooter. I think all of us here would agree that if it weren't for them, the number of casualties and victims would have been much higher. There is no doubt, there is no doubt that their heroic actions saved lives. The FBI has been assisting our partners at the Houston Police Department with the investigation of the shooting at Lakewood Church since it immediately happened. We'll continue to assist them for as long as needed. The FBI is working with HPD to follow all logical investigative leads related to the shooting. As the chief just said, it's way too early to determine a motive for the shooter's actions, and we're not in the business of speculating. Our work is based on facts and evidence, and we're still in the process of collecting those facts and evidence. That process will take time. It is very common for the FBI to provide support to partner law enforcement agencies during an active shooter incident and in the immediate aftermath of a shooting. The FBI has an arsenal of local and national resources at our disposal that we can deploy. These include technical resources as well as personnel resources such as agents, investigative analysts, evidence response teams, victim service specialists, just to name a few. Yesterday, we deployed all those resources and will continue to support HPD for as long as it's needed. In the meantime, if anyone has information about Sunday's shooting at Lakewood Church that they'd like to share, we'd ask that you please contact the Houston Police Department and share the lead as they are the lead investigative agency. Again, the FBI is assisting and we will continue to assist our partners here for as long as needed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, JBC Director uh, Kevin Lilly, thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. Um, I'm Kevin Lilly, Chairman of the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission. Um, first, I'd like to offer my sincere condolences to the congregation of Lakewood Church and to Greater Houston. Um, as the Mayor said, our places of worship are both sacred and safe, and um, all Texans grieve what happened at Lakewood Church yesterday. And Indeed, when the sanctity of a church is violated or any house of worship, mm -hmm. that is an attack on the very foundation of this nation. And, um, and so we are so grateful for the action of our Houston police officer involved, as well as TABC agent Adrian Herrera, who were the officers on the scene, uh, and their actions working together to neutralize the suspect as the FBI said saved lives. You know, the term hero has been used today, and sometimes it's said flippantly. Uh, but I think what happened yesterday was the personification of heroism and valor, um, in which a total disregard for your own safety, saving others before yourself. Um, uh, Chief, I was talking to a couple of your deputy chiefs yesterday, as well as some of the FBI agents, and they spoke almost in, in, in great respect of the fact that these two officers held their ground. They held their ground in the face of rifle fire at point blank range. And they continued to fire until the, the uh, perpetrator was neutralized and they did not yield. And they remained there as a wall Agent Herrera and the HPD officer involved were a gauntlet. 
They were a wall that existed between worshipers and terror, between freedom of religion and murder. And we should all be mindful of the sacrifices that our men and women in law enforcement make every day. It is a profession of the highest honor. I just thought this morning that if your son or daughter came into your living room tonight and said, Mom, Dad, I want to be a cop. I want to be in law enforcement. You should receive that request with reverence and respect because these individuals place their lives on the line for us. It is an act of service unlike any other. And so I would like to thank Chief Fenner for your excellent, excellent work. I'd also like to thank our mayor. I have known Mayor Whitmire for many years and he and I don't always agree on everything politically. <laughs> and we've been on other sides of the fence. But I will say this, for as long as I've known him, he has always honored and respected law enforcement. Public safety, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the most critical things that we have. And I would say this, to elected officials that want to defund police, to elected officials that want to demonize law enforcement, I say they do so at their own political peril. And so we need to unify as a community to defend our men and women in the thin blue line. So I would just like to thank all of you here and um, to all the brave men and women thank you. who defend our city. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Commander, yes, sir. passing a homicide. Good afternoon. I'm Christopher Hassig, Commander, HPD Homicide, also leader of our Special Investigations Unit, last name H-A-S-S-I-G. I just want to talk about the investigative steps, uh, where we're at, what we've accomplished so far, and what we're going to be doing moving forward. All right, uh, please be mindful. We are approximately 24 hours into this investigation. It's very fluid, and the investigators under my Special Investigations Unit have been working around the clock and gathering information this entire time. So Sunday, yesterday, February 11th, uh, at 13.53, at 1.53 p.m., we had an individual pull up in front of Lakewood Church on the west side of the building off of Timmins. She gets out of her white vehicle. She opens the door pulls out the seven-year-old child out of the back seat, as well as uh, a bag that is with her. She goes, she confronts a security guard who lets her in along the west side of the building. At 13.55, pardon me, 1.55 p.m., she immediately starts firing inside of the hallway on the west side of Lakewood Church. She's in the hall, not in the sanctuary. Multiple rounds are fired by her, at which point uh, Officer Moreno of the Houston Police Department, working an approved extra job at the location, as well as TABC Agent Herrera, return fire, and the exchange is all there on the west side of the building, in the hallway. Multiple shots are exchanged by all three. She eventually falls to the ground. The seven-year-old child it falls to the ground as well from gunfire, one uh, gunshot wound to the head. Like has been mentioned earlier today, he is in critical condition at this time. And uh, at 14.07, 2.07 p.m., she is pronounced deceased by Houston Fire Department personnel. Other things that we know at this point in regards to the investigation. Our shooter is identified by a driver's license as Genesee Moreno, 36 years old, Hispanic female. Uh, there are some discrepancies. We do have reports. She used multiple aliases, including Jeffrey Escalante. So she has utilized both male and female names. But through all of our investigation to this point, talking with individuals, interviews, documents, 
Houston Police Department reports she has been identified this entire time as female, she, her, and so uh, we are identifying her as Genesee Moreno, Hispanic female. There were two weapons of hers recovered on the scene, an Anderson Manufacturing AR-15, which was what she utilized to fire at the officers. There was a sticker on the buttstock of the rifle that stated Palestine, a sticker simply stated Palestine on the buttstock. Also within the possession of her, uh, near her, what she brought in according to the video and she had in a bag was a 22 caliber rifle by Blue Line Solutions. She had that, she brought that in, she did not fire that weapon. We do have her vehicle, we are in possession of that. We will be processing that and see if there is more evidence. We wanna thank our federal and state partners for their assistance in helping process the scene. We, uh, we have uncovered some items. We do have some anti-Semitic writings that we have uncovered during this process. But like I said, we are 24 hours into it. It is very uh, new. We are getting new information as the uh, hours change. And so we are gonna be delving into that more. But we do wanna stress that she acted alone. We do believe this was what we term a, a, a lone wolf, lone suspect situation. We do not believe this is part of a larger nexus. She is not part of a larger group or set of individuals. We believe that Genesee Moreno acted alone. We do have some facts that she was uh, put under an emergency detention order by Houston police officers, uh, we believe in 2016. Uh, we do believe that she does have a mental health history that is documented through us and through interviews with family members. And we do wanna state that uh, through our investigation, I mentioned anti-Semitic writing. We do believe that there was a f familial dispute that has taken place between uh, her ex-husband and her ex-husband's family. And some of those individuals are, of, uh, are Jewish. So we believe that that is, might, might possibly be where all of this stems from. Uh, we ask anybody with information to please call the Houston Homicide Department, 713-308-3600, or Crime Stoppers at 713-222-TIPS, T-I-P-S, if they have any information regarding Ms. Moreno or anything that could assist us with this investigation. Thank you very much. Thank we'll you. hold questions until we translate. Thank you, uh, Commander, and it's, uh, it's great to have a Ph.D. Uh, Spanish-speaking uh, Commander, I want to thank you for what you do for all of us and, and the community. Let me say this before we open up for questions. A lot of people in this room, okay? Um, raise your hand and we're going to acknowledge. We're going to try to get to many questions as we can, okay? Uh, but we ask you to respect the process. It's easier that way, okay? Go ahead, sir. Chief Bitter, Kevin Isbeck, ABC 13. Hey, you Kevin. and your main investigator mentioned that she got past a security guard in the west side of the building. Was there some sort of lapse of security that allowed her to get in the building? Was we, she not properly checked, like we, the metal detector? No, we're not saying that at all. I, I think specifically uh, she displayed or possibly pointed a weapon uh, at, at that security officer and, and uh, uh, kind of forced her way, her way in. So not saying a security breach at all, and that's an important question. Uh, we want to acknowledge the security uh, that they had around uh, the uh, um, uh, church uh, that day and, and, and all the days. Go ahead. Can you talk, sir, about the relationship between the suspect and the seven-year-old fighting for their I'll, I'll let the investigator say, say a few words on it, uh, but uh, we do believe it's, it's, it's a relative, and, and, and uh, I think it's been confirmed uh, that is the biological mother, and if I'm, I'm correct on that, and that, yeah, it's the biological mother, okay? We have a question about Go ahead. the gun, the weapon, this might be also a special agent in charge. We understand that she had a previous criminal background that showed she had a misdemeanor charge for a weapon that was taken away from her, and that the FBI also made question about a possible weapon she was going to purchase in 2023. How was she able to get a hold of these weapons? That's part of the investigation, and, and uh, um, the, the, he, he can speak to that um, if, if, you, if you want really quickly, but uh, that's the challenges that we have, and that's what law enforcement uh, talk about all the time. We need to make sure everything is tight, and we're not people standing up here 
uh, against second and right amendments, but uh, people who are suffering from mental illness, uh, criminals, criminals, um, and and yes. Um, so we're we're looking at that. that and if uh, you want to add to it, you okay? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, Come on. I, I don't. Yeah. <clears throat> I don't really have anything to add. I think it's uh, we're in the infancy stages right. of this. I, I completely understand. We want to know the motive, how she got the weapon, why she did this. Uh, we're not there yet. Well, for um, purposes, then, if, if and when the FBI does make an inquiry about weapons that are going to try to be purchased by someone who has a mental health issue and a criminal background, what do you do with that information then afterwards? So when that information uh, comes through, uh, the FBI will receive it, and, and then we share that with our, with our local partners. Yes. Chief? Yeah. Yes, go Chief, ahead. Was it clear how much ammunition the suspect was carrying amongst those two rifles? I think we're still working through it, but can I say multiple uh, rounds of ammunition? Uh, multiple rounds were fired, but just 24 hours into it, I, I don't want to give you a definitive answer. Multiple rounds uh, and multiple rounds fired. Go ahead, and we'll work our way to the back. Chief, go ahead, Mario. Yeah. Yes, Christopher Moreno, and we'll be sending that information out to y'all, um, and I don't want to speak for my uh, TABC, uh, but we'll, we'll get that out uh, sometime pretty soon. Go ahead. Because we're dealing with multiple Morenos, is there any relation here? Just want to make sure of that. No. Okay. No. Got it. Not that we know of. question now with regards to, I need a clarification, now my question. <laughs> One more, and this it. There's a lot of people One in this room. Go ahead. Said, go, go ahead, Mario. Go ahead. Thank yeah. you for the transparency. Okay. We really appreciate it. All right. Uh, I got it at 153. He arrives, or she arrives. On, forgive, forgive me. She arrives at 153. 207 right. declared dead by HPD. How long right. before there was gunfire engaged, and how long did that gun exchange last? The the shooting began uh, almost instantaneous upon her entering the building, which is roughly 155. It takes her a little over a minute to get in after talking with the security guard. The firing commences right after that. There's a, a few minute gun battle, for lack of a better term. Uh, they're exchanging gunfire and uh, she is down. And then our, our officers followed their tactical training. They, uh, they linked up, they, they talked, talked about a game plan, approached the body. Somebody else pulled the seven year old to safety. And so all, all of this transpired within a matter of you know, less than 12 minutes. And we'll get a timeline a little bit later. Let me get you some more questions. Go ahead. She, why Lakewood Church? That's a long way from Conroe where she lived. I, I can't uh, speculate for her. That's part of the investigation. Uh, but uh, it could be any place of worship. And, and as I said earlier, and I, I want us to, to kind of get this. It could be any location. Uh, bad people. Are people, su are individuals suffering from mental illness and, and, and with guns? We need to all look out for them. Those family members she was in a dispute with, though, did they attend services there? No, not at all. Go ahead, and then we'll work our way back to you. Go ahead. Chief, are you all How you doing? Hassig, um, as an extension of the Why Lakewood question, referencing the writings that you, uh, that you talked about, Commander Hassig, was there anything in those writings that stipulated a desire for acting out against specific people? What investigation? No. <laughs> Nothing at this specific moment. Uh, we, we don't have anything that pops out. Again, we're reviewing all of those uh, writings, but nothing that stands out at this time. Commander, Chief, can you talk no, no. Go ahead. Chief, can you all right. Just real quick, um, yeah. About security measures at the church, we were told that uh, we heard that you may have tried to get into a classroom full of students. I'm not sure. That's part of the investigation. And I, I forgot to address this. Last Yesterday, there was a question about a body worn camera. Our, our officers were uh, did have body worn cameras, so a part of this investigation is going through that, plus the security cameras. So I really don't want to speculate right now, but we will be transparent as uh, more information comes comes in over here on the corner, and then we'll get to you. Thank yes, you, Chief. go ahead. For the commander, based on your preview of the information you pro you just provided, what did she say? What did she, uh, you yeah, guys have camera specific. information, et cetera, et cetera. What did the woman say to that security guard at all, if anything at all? I, I mean, it, it's still under investigation. She displayed uh, a weapon, and uh, we w we're going to re-interview the security guard, but uh, she had a rifle, and it was pointed at her, and she was unarmed. I'm going to get you two. Go ahead, and then we'll work our way over here. Uh, Chief, did I leave anybody? We don't want to jump ahead of that. I think it's very important that we don't. Um, uh, as a society right now, we, we want to 
put group different people for different reasons. I think that's that's really counterproductive uh, to our healing process, uh, to uh, the way that we want to uh, uh, patrol and, and police our, our cities. So I just want us to simply wait on the facts. Uh, you got mental illness here. Um, you got a lot of things going on. And so l let us work that out. And I promise you, you know, we're transparent here. We'll get it to you. Go ahead. Chief, Thanks. Do you have any more explanation about why she was using aliases? Oh, I, I don't know. Uh, all we can do is uh, as part of the process and we're just 24 hours into it. Um, you know, there was a lot of discussion in our so in social media with, with some uh, professional uh, um, um, reporters and investigators and some that's not so. Um, so we're just here to, to put, present the facts as we know at this time. Is that connected to other things she's been charged with in the past or is it? Yeah, we, we don't know at this time. We're still working on it. Go ahead and then we'll come right here and then you and then back around. Do you know Go ahead. how many off-duty officers between HPD, TABC, other agencies that were already at the church and between those two officers who opened fire? Do we know which one, which one of the two or both of them actually took the suspect down and as well as who shot the seven? That's that's part of the investigation. I, I know that both of them did discharge, but give us some time to review uh, the, the videos. And, you know, um, whatever we have by our officers, body worn cameras, we, we'll put that out uh, within 30 days. So, do you, do yep. you know how many officers were already at the church working detail duty? Yes, they were actually working there. You know, but how many total besides? I don't know right now. We'll. we'll, we'll Chief, yeah. Any, Hold up. Chief, have you uncovered any direct connection between the suspect and Lakewood Church at this point? Perhaps uh, divorce counseling she may have been undergoing. There? We don't know. That's 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 part of the investigation, and that's something too that we we, we will share it's right here, and then we'll work our way back around to you. Go ahead. This suspect was I got you. on law enforcement's radar. Is there any indication that police had more opportunities to intervene in other ways sooner? You saying on on that radar that what what does that mean? Um, and and I, I just yeah I don't I don't want to cut you off, but um, I don't know if if that's you know an accurate. Uh, but um, she did have a history, if you you want to say that. Uh, but uh, there are millions upon top of millions of people who have a history, and and um, to your question and answering it. The uh, response is that we all need to continue to work together, uh, neighbors, family members, getting that information up uh, to us in a timely manner where we can be proactive and prevent it. I think that's where you're going, but I just don't have all, all the facts right now. Go ahead, sir. The grandmother in the house with the suspect, uh, was she taken into custody this morning or just transferred no. to the hospital? No, I think she was uh, possibly transported to the hospital. Uh, let me say this, and according to my commander, uh, uh, she and, and a few other members have been really cooperating with the investigation, and that's why I ask for prayers for everybody. Um, can you imagine uh, what family members are going th uh, through? Okay, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah. Yesterday, I, I know this question was asked, but I do I want to circle back on it. It's the idea of how the young boy was, was shot, was, was hit with a bullet. I know it's difficult to talk about, but it, can you explain to us how that went down? Was she using him as a shield? I, was he yeah. on her? I, I, don't, I don't know right now. Again, once we have a chance to view uh, that video, and, and, and y'all know, whatever we have to, to show, we'll show it, but we just don't know right now. Another question that comes up, and let's be out front with it. Uh, was it the police officers who shot or was it hurt? We don't know. And I think the worst thing that we can do is speculate on something as is important to that. Once we get the, uh, uh, um, the evidence in and uh, re ballistics and, and all that, I, I think we'll, we'll know that. Let me get to him and I'll get back to you, Mark. Go ahead. The yep. suspect uh, who brought the child, uh, identified as the child's biological mother, the child who was shot and critically injured. That's what, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Who's the security guard employed by? Can you give us, uh, the name? I don't know. We'll we'll we'll, we'll let you know on that. I'm, I'm I don't know right Chief, now. Go ahead. What's the history of the two long guns in this case? How did she purchase them? We don't know. That's that, that's part of the investigation, and I think it's a very important part of the investigation. Uh, we need to know um, uh, where uh, and 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 you know how uh, all that and, and why. Yeah. Was so. There any reference yeah. Any point that she had did you need to say something? something? Okay, I'll get it. Oh, the end. Okay. Of a bomb that she had on her. 
She she did, and I, I can I can answer that. Um, she did, and that we 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 stated that yesterday, um, and we'll state it again today. She did threaten that she had a bomb on her person. Okay, let me get her on on the corner right here. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I didn't. Um, just yeah. to follow up on the gun question and to clarify, so did she actually own those guns? Had had she taken those guns from some, another legal owner? The that's that's owner part of the investigation, but I I, I was uh. I, Pretty sure that that she purchased one, and you can speak to the de uh, the facts of it. Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah we're, we're still we're still con conducting the the trace on that, but we do know that the one that she did utilize was, from what we can tell, purchased in December uh, legally. Like in right. December, like a month right. ago, two months ago. Yeah, we'll get two more. Let me get somebody I hadn't heard from. Go ahead. Will uh, the vehicles that are still being processed over there? We'll, we'll send that out in coordination uh, with our investigators, with uh, uh, Lakewood officials as, as well. But we'll get that out uh, as soon as we can. Okay, give me give me two more. Just, uh, sir, go ahead. Just, was there any indication, uh, Chief or the Commander, from your, from your investigation thus far, that there had been a, a direct threat or concern within the confines of Lakewood? emails or what have you regarding this woman and that, that was no there. no sir you mentioned the writings yeah. you mentioned the writings and the stickers was the shooter at all wearing any type of garb or any kind of messaging on on your body i really don't know right now and uh, uh we'll we'll it's 24 hours uh when we when we uh, you know determine it we will we'll share it with you okay last one We always, and, and not only churches, all religious institutions, uh, we have a strong relationship with all of them. And, and, and you see, here, here's, here's, here's the goal, and, and here's the deal in, in, in this great city. Um, tragedy happens. And what I've seen in 34 years of service, a, a lifetime uh, uh, residence with a few exceptions years to, to college, whenever something happens, we come back stronger. And, and, and better. And, and this is what we play. This is why you see so many people up here and so many people in, in the back, including our mayor, uh, including uh, uh, our other elected officials. Uh, our congresswoman is here. Um, we're going to be better. But in the way of getting better, building stronger relationships, communicating every day. And please, community and everybody, stop putting people in, in boxes, okay? Uh, that, that's counterproductive. Uh, good people should line up with good people, whatever faith, whatever community, and all of us working together. And that's what we t tend to do. But look, it's been a long day for, and especially for my investigators. And let me acknowledge them. I know they're somewhere in, in, in the room for the hard work all of our homicide uh, in, uh, investigators do each and every day. But thank y'all for being here. And uh, we tried to ask, answer as much as we could. So thank y'all. All right.